Hello, all Quincy High School Fall 2 athletes and families. My name is Kevin Mahoney. I'm the athletic director here at Quincy High School. Um, in a traditional year, we would be in person meeting, um, going over all the procedures and policies as we get ready for another season. Um, but, you know, given the current times, I am going to do a video recording tonight and go through all the um, PowerPoint slides here tonight and send them out to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to touch base with me. Going to touch base on some athletic department policies and procedures, and then also touch base on the EEA guidelines um, that the fall two season will abide by, and then also touch base on um, some of the spectator policies as we get ready for this upcoming fall two season. All right, so let me uh, let me pull up the PowerPoint here. Um, all right. Okay, so here's my information. Uh, once again, Kevin Mahoney, Director of Athletics here at Quincy High School. Uh, there is my office line and email. If you guys have any questions throughout the season, uh, please feel free to touch base with me, and I'll be happy to get uh, get back to you right away. Um, I, I am very fortunate to have a great support staff here at the Qu here at Quincy High School um, it, within the athletic department. Um, first and foremost, our athletic trainer, Steve Garofalo. He'll work with your son or daughter if any injuries occur during the season. Um, if you have any questions for Steve, there's his email right there. Feel free to touch base with him. Uh, Coach Beach is our equipment manager. That's his email right there. Coach Beach will be working um, mainly with our football guys during the fall two season with any, uh, you know, helmet, shoulder pads, any issues with that stuff. Um, you know, you'll, you'll want to go touch base with Coach Beach. Um, and then I included our nurses on there as well, Ashley Santispago and uh, Martina Ryan with their emails and their office line and fax number. Um, if you guys have any questions related to COVID, um, if you end up becoming uh, positive during the season or if you have, end up developing any symptoms, please, please reach out to our school nurses. They'll go over all the quarantine protocols with you guys and uh, what you need to do in order to get back into school and into sport. Um, and then also their fax numbers there if um, a physical needs to be sent into them, um, you know, during the season. So fall two sports uh, and the levels that we offer here at Quincy High School. So obviously football, uh, we'll have our varsity, our JV1 and JV2 levels. This year, the, um, our freshman numbers are increasing, at, you know, as the day goes by. Um, but there are going to be some sophomores that are going to be playing on that JV2 team just to uh, maintain that program and that level um, for this fall two season. Um, in cheerleading, we have our varsity and JV programs. And then indoor track and field is a combined Quincy North Quincy team, both in boys and girls. Uh, now our fall two sports head coaches. Uh, for football, we have Coach Carey. Uh, Coach Carey is a dean here at Quincy High School. Uh, his email is there if you need to touch base with him about any football-related questions. Uh, we do have a bunch of other football coaches within the building as well. Um, so it's, it's great to have those guys here um, with the kids on a daily basis. Um, our cheerleading coach is Valerie Chen. That's her email there for any cheer questions. And Q&Q &Q track and field is Coach Hennessy uh, with his email as well. All right, so the MIA season calendar here, um, obviously a very unique uh, year uh, with the current times, but um, the MIA has approved the, the following sports uh, to be played during this fall two floating season. Um, these were sports that were not approved earlier in the year due to um, the level of risk associated with the sport, uh, but they have since been approved. And we started back on February 22nd. And this week we'll be starting our first few games and meets of the season. So uh, this is this is why this this information is important to get out to you guys, um, so that everybody's on the same page as we move forward here with games and meets. So um, February 22nd through April 25th, uh, football, fall cheer, and indoor track and field were approved to be played. Uh, communication. So from my end, these are two of the big uh, the big ones that I'll use throughout the season. Um, 
right there, the first bullet point is our, is a link to our school website. Um, I'll put up daily daily schedules, daily announcements, um, any sort of a postponement announcements due to weather. Um, our schedules are posted, so the schedules are up there for our football team. Obviously, cheerleaders can go off of that, and then our track and field schedule is up as well. Um, and then rosters will be put up this week for those sports. So that's the that's the one stop shop for any sort of things of athletics that you might need. Um, all the information associated um, with the COVID-19 protocols are also on there as well. And then uh, for those that are on Twitter, please give us a follow at QHS Athletics. On Twitter, I do daily schedules, um, you know, post uh, highlights, post game scores, uh, live scores, um, all stars, all, sc all scholastic selections, you know, any sort of news related to Quincy High School athletics that will go up on there. So um, please give us a follow if you're on Twitter. Just to run through some of the basics for registration, I know obviously at this point everybody's been registered on Family ID, or if they do plan on participating, they'll have to get registered. Um, this is a this is a platform that we transformed over to uh, a few years back, and it's just been great for our, our coaches and, and myself. Um, it's just very easy to break down team by team rosters, uh, get out emergency contact information to the coaches and, and any sort of medical history as well uh, to our athletic trainer and our nurses. So. Uh, this is that's what family ID is, and and um, that's why we have everybody register pre, uh, prior to the season. Uh, physical is obviously a big part of participation, so you know we we are required to have an up to date physical on file for all our athletes. Um, physicals are good for 13 months, uh, so if your physical is going to expire during the season, uh, you'll want to get an up to date physical into us. So uh, please send in a physical. Please send it into myself and the nurse so that so that we both have it and that, that it's on file and accounted for. Um, if you're having trouble getting an appointment with your primary care, there is some minute clinics and urgent cares out there that are offering sports physicals. Um, I know there's one on Washington Street in Quincy, uh, the convenient MD that's offering sports physicals for twenty dollars. So if you want to take advantage of that, um, feel free to do that. Um, and then impact testing. So impact testing. Is a requirement as well for our student athletes. Um, some some may have taken an eighth grade or middle school on their way up, and that is fine. Um, but if you're new to it, um, then we do require the impact testing to take place. This year, what we've been doing is been able to send out a specific link that comes directly from impact test and allows the student athletes to take the test at home. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes. We do ask that the students take it in a quiet um, quiet place, uninterrupted on their laptop so that the, the results come back accurate. Basically, our athletic trainer and your primary care will use those baseline results um, in the event that you did get a concussion. They'll use those results uh, to determine the severity of the injury and then also during the recovery process. Um, okay, another piece, obviously something new this year given the times, but COVID-19 daily symptom checklist. Um, a Google form was emailed out to all the families via Aspen prior to the season. But it's also on a link is also found on our website. So on that athletics website, there is a link on the left hand side. There's a tab that takes you directly to this Google form uh, for the daily checklist. We do ask that the athletes fill it out daily basis, uh, an hour and a half before any game practice or workout session. Our coaches will review it. I'll review it, um, and we'll share any of uh, of you know or any anybody that reports a symptom that will be shared with our nurses. Big piece for this fall season, fall two season. If your son or daughter has any sort of symptoms related to COVID-19, just please keep them home. Um, don't be hesitant to, oh, I can't miss a practice, can't miss this game. Please take the safety of uh, your son or daughter and the others associated with athletics into account. Do not send them to the game or practice or even a workout. Contact the coach, give them the heads up, and then we'll have the nurses touch base with you, um, you and your family to go over the, the um, the next steps. If your son or daughter does test positive for COVID-19, uh, this is a new, this is something new that we're that 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 we were mandated to to follow. Any athlete that tests positive for COVID-19, they must be cleared for participation by their primary care physician. Okay, so a doctor's note is required now. Uh, once we get that medical clearance, then the athlete must complete a five-stage return to play protocol with the athletic trainer before returning. 
to full participation. So this is very similar to um, a concussion. So if you got if you got a concussion, um, you know you finally get cleared by your doctor, then you're going to return. Then you're going to do a five day return to play protocol with our athletic trainer. COVID nineteen positive, you'll you'll do your ten days of quarantine. Hopefully your symptoms are fine at that point, and then you return with the doctor's note, and then you'll start a return to play protocol with Steve, the athletic trainer. Okay, now user fee policy. So all, all user fees, we do ask that they get submitted before the first contest. Um, if they're not in by then, you know, please, as soon as possible after that. Um, cheerleading and indoor track are $100, $150 for any athlete doing football. Um, any can be paid by cash, check, money order, um, or you can pay online as well. And we do offer payment plans for those families that might need the uh, financial assistance just please contact me separately and uh, we can work out something together that best suits your situation. Uh, uniform and equipment policy. Um, any equipment that get that you receive from the athletic department must be returned at the end of the season. Um, obviously with football, there's a lot of pads, equipment, uh, helmets, shoulder pads, other equipment that is associated with playing football. We do ask that all that stuff returns to us at the end of the season, um, uniforms included. Anybody that, um, that that does not abide by that will either be charged a fee or not be allowed to participate um, in another sport that comes up, maybe if they play in the spring, and then seniors will be held out of signing out for graduation until that equipment is returned to us. School day requirements. Um, so attendance, obviously a big piece. So we want even during this uh, remote phase and this hybrid phase, we do ask that students are logged into their classes participating fully. Um, especially our student athletes. School comes first and um, we expect a lot out of our student athletes and to be the role models within the building. And so we do ask that they're uh, taking school extremely serious during these times. Um, and our coaches will be kept abreast to um, the attendance of their, their, their athletes. Um, and, and respect and integrity, ob obviously a big piece. <clears throat> like I said, we want our athletes to be role models within the building and with their peers. So um, you know, treating their classmates and staff with, with the utmost respect um, and performing the best of their ability within the classroom is, is a big piece for us. And then, and then it transform, transforms right to the uh, athletic field in, in, with sportsmanship. So our athletes, coaches, and especially our parents as well, um, you know, we want to maintain that positive uh, environment within our athletics um, games, practices, um, respect for our teammates coaches, um, opponents, and also officials. You know, we want to show them respect and, and, and treat everybody uh, treat everybody with respect and, and, and compete at a high level um, while maintaining that level of sportsmanship. Uh, zero tolerance uh, to any sort of bullying, hazing, harassment, uh, no pranking as well. Uh, we try to try to avoid those situations. Um, and, and honestly, if our coaches talk to our kids about this at the beginning of the season. Uh, they go over this at the, um, with each level. If you feel that for whatever reason during the season that you might be a victim of bullying or hazing or harassment, you know, please reach out to myself, our coaches, uh, a dean, guidance counselor, anybody that you feel comfortable with talking to, please, please uh, let them know so that we can take care of that immediately. Uh, just a few MIA rules to touch base on. So bona fide team member rule um, basically is a, your loyalty to your high school team. So I know that there's a lot of a lot of our student athletes participate in club teams, AAU teams. Um, once you're a member of the high school team, that um, that's first and foremost the activity that you guys must attend ahead of any sort of other club or AAU activity. All right. Um, so for weekend practices, the rule is excluded. However, it's up to the coach on how um, they want to handle that situation. So if you have a unique situation that you got to work with the coach on that, uh, that's fine. But anything during the week, first and foremost of the high school team, and then secondary is any sort of club or other activity that you guys get going on. Um, and then obviously the other big piece is our chemical health rule, uh, with it, which is from the MIAA. Um, you know, from the earliest fall practice date to the end of the school year, um, any student shall not use, consume, possess, buy or sell um, any sort of beverage containing alcohol, 
tobacco product, marijuana, or other, any other controlled substance. Uh, QPS even goes a little bit stricter than this, and uh, you're in violation of this rule if he or she is knowingly in the presence of. Um, and there is violations to this rule. There will be a loss of 25% of the season for the first violation, and the second violation is up to 60%. So we always tell our athletes, please make good, positive choices. Um, so, you know, you don't want to run into a situation like this. So ju just con continuously make good choices, and, uh, you know, then you'll be fine. All right, so as I mentioned, so EEA guidelines is what the state um, and the MIAA and their task force have been utilizing in terms of how they manage um, a safe return to sport. Um, so the EEA guidelines comes directly from the state. Uh, so these are the ones that we've been following throughout our fall season and our winter season and now transitioning to our fall two season. All right, so mandatory facial coverings for all sports. So all our athletes are required to wear a mask or a facial covering during active play. Um, there's a few bullet points except for exceptions. During the winter season, the swimmers did not have to wear a mask as they were swimming in the water, but as they got onto the dock uh, in the deck, they had to wear a mask. Um, our low risk sports, um, which was cross country in the fall, if a runner was plenty of distance of feet away, at least 14 feet, then you know the mask could have came down for a bit, but as they got closer to everybody, um, and obviously at the end and at the beginning and the end of the race, they had to bring them up in track. Athletes <clears throat> must be wearing the mask the entire time. Um, outdoor track and indoor track are, are still considered moderate risk sports. So the, uh, the mask is required at all times. Um, and then also if you do have a medical condition or a disability that makes you unable to wear the facial covering, then that needs to be documented. Our nurses need to be aware of that as well as myself and our athletic trainer. Um, but all spectators, coaches, referees, any staff that's associated with covering the game, they all must wear a facial covering as well. Um, social distancing. So, um, and during practices and games is a, is a big piece. Um, so our coaches will be keeping record of all the individuals present at team activities. Um, if there ever was a situation where uh, we had a positive case within the team, then we'll go back to our coaches and ask for who was present and start to do some sort of a contact trace associated with that team or that specific level um, based on the positive case. Um, indoor facilities limits the capacity to no more than 40% of the building's occupancy. Um, right now, most of our activities are outdoors with football, um, but I do know that cheers inside and some days tr track does uh, some of their warm ups inside as well, but it's a capacity of no more than 40% and our gym is pretty pretty good size. The MIA does maintain that no more than 25 players can be on an indoor court or surf. So if we do have to bring football inside, we can have no more than 25 players um, on a specific court. Like I said, our gym is pretty big, so we could potentially space out um, certain groups of, of more than 25. But as long as there's plenty of um, distance between both groups, then we should be okay. Um, Dugouts, benches, bleachers will be allowed to be open as long as six feet distancing can be maintained. Uh, we'll go over more specific um, to the social distancing for each sport um, later on in the PowerPoint. But in terms of football, football bench area and cheerleading on the sideline as well. Um, locker rooms are closed. They're still closed. They're, they can be only accessed for toileting. Um, however, since our, since our school is doing um, hybrid educational instruction, uh, during the day, then the, the locker rooms are able to be open for changing before and after school. Um, so, but we can no, have no more than 10 students at any single time. Okay, so students can drop off some stuff in, first thing in the morning. At the end of the day, grab their stuff, get changed, and then head out to practice. But um, we'll have to maintain that no more than 10 students are in there at the, at the same time. Um, <clears throat> same goes for during games. They will, the locker rooms will be off limits. Uh, for any sort of meetings before, during, and after practices or games. Um, and then we, you know, we're trying to promote a arrive, leave, and pr pl arrive, play, and leave mentality. Um, so you guys should be coming to practice dressed, ready to go. Um, and then right at the end of the practice, not a lot, we should not be congregating in one area. We should just be heading out on our way, um, you know, to avoid that level of, that extra level of contact. Um, hygiene, obviously, um, we've been we've been given 
a, a bunch of PPE. So I have, we have a lot of uh, hand sanitizer. We have masks. We have disinfectant spray and disinfectant wipes. Um, so we ask that the athletes, coaches use hand sanitizer before and after each activity, uh, whether it's practice or they might be uh, in between drills or whatnot. Um, and then sportsmanship, you'll see, will be will remain touchless. There won't be any um, handshakes after the game with football. Um, try to avoid fist pumps and high fives as well. Um, any sort of shared equipment should be disinfected at the at the beginning and um, uh, be, at the beginning and after each session. Um, we are encouraging our athletes to bring their own water ball. Um, so the water fountains can be available, but just for refill, but we won't be having the water jugs down to football. Um, so we do ask that all athletes bring plenty of water with them, uh, to practices and games to, to remain hydrated. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you know, you should be arriving dressed, ready for practice and then heading out, uh, right at the, the conclusion of the event. Um, okay, now just touching base on spectators. So the EEA guidelines um, specifically say, state that uh, if an outdoor or indoor facility can allow for six feet of social distance between spectators, then spectators will be allowed to attend. Um, but there is a limit to two adults, parents and guardians or chaperones and their siblings of a participating player. Um, so each player will have two adults and younger siblings um, attend the games, both home and away. Um, but as I mentioned before, spectators must wear a mask at all times and maintain that six feet of social distance um, during the games. These are our plans um, as we head towards the fall two season. So with football and cheerleading, um, each athlete will be given, a land, given two lanyards uh, for their parents or their guardians to wear at the games. Um, it's going to only be two adults, parents and guardians, and their younger siblings of the player will be allowed to attend both home and away. Okay, so you're going to uh, attend the game. As you walk through the gate, we'll have somebody at a table checking people off by the roster. Um, each player would just have two. And I, I do have to reiterate that it is, it is only athletes that are um, athletes that are actually participating in the game. Um, so if you have a, you know, a freshman that's playing just freshman, they can't attend the varsity game. So it's just the 45 participants playing in that game. Those are the only ones that will be allowed to attend. Um, and it is adults. It's specifically adults. Um, so at this time, any students um, will not be allowed to attend um, the games. And, you know, just to touch base on transportation for our away events, uh, we can have no more than 23 team members on a bus. So that includes both the players and the coaches. Um, everybody has to wear their mask the entire time. Uh, one student per seat, and it's staggered seating with what one in the aisle, one in the window, by and you know up and down the the bus. Uh, and windows do have to be opened a little bit for ventilation. Um, and our coaches have been given seating charts um, that we that we do ask them to have the assigned seats sit in the same seat as they they got there and when they come home um, from to and from games. All right. Now, as I mentioned, the MIA had to come up with some modifications to align with the EA guidelines. Um, and, and we're going to run through the football cheerleading and track ones right now. So football, um, as I mentioned before, obviously facial coverings worn at all times. So uh, but they do not permit the use of gaiters. So the balaclava style masks, which is those ski masks, they do as long as they're multi-layered, those are permitted to be worn. Um, for the football players out there, the, um, the, Quin uh, the Quincy and North Quincy Hall of Fame actually donated the, uh, those balaclava style masks to the football programs. Um, so our kids should be wearing those. Uh, we do have, as I mentioned, we, we do have other plenty of masks if, in the event that um, they want to just go that route. But masks have to be worn at all times during play. Rosters were, uh, were reduced to... They cannot exceed 45 players and only six coaches on the field at a time. So um, our rosters will be right at 45 for at least the varsity games and, our, and the JV and freshman games uh, cannot exceed that number, um, which they usually don't. But uh, Friday nights, we can only have up to 45 on the sideline. Um, and you'll see during the game, we'll have six foot markers, which they'll actually be small disc cones 
on the sideline where our players will have to social distance at those cones. Um, huddles, you can only space um, face one direction, and there should be plenty of spacing between players. Um, there will be mandatory water breaks at each halfway point of each quarter, so right around the six-minute mark or so. Um, whether it's, you know, the ref will determine the specific uh, period, but there will be a mandatory water break. Um, team timeouts will be extended to two minutes as well as um, any sort of intermission between quarters or after a successful field goal or safety or um, between, you know, the, a, a, a try, touchdown, and then the next kick, there'll be two minutes there. Um, halftime, 10 minutes. Um, and then just for the conduct, uh, the contact stuff uh, can only conduct full contact up to 30 minutes per week, um, 45 minutes during the week where, where we don't have a scheduled game. Um, and then, as I mentioned, with the, the hygiene piece, any shared equipment like blocking pads, footballs, disinfected, um, should be disinfected at the end of practices. Uh, for cheerleading, so our, um, our cheerleaders – once, you know, as they, where they're practicing with their mats inside, they, um, they're going to be cleaned and sprayed with disinfectant at the end of each session um, by our custodial staff. Um, no sharing of equipment. So it should be no shared equipment of pom pom signs, megaphones, um, plenty of distance between each um, male or female as they're warming up and stretching. Um, and then while cheering at the contest or in team formation, each member should be at least 10 feet apart. They did limit the amount of um, members to a team. So maximum of 20 cheerleaders are in attendance at any outdoor game or event. Um, mixing and matching of bases and flyers from groups should be avoided. Uh, stunt groups, they should be distanced at least 14 feet from other stunt groups. And um, stunts should be considered in light of the mask wearing. So they'll obviously have to wear a mask the entire time. So some of the stunts that they might perform, usually um, they might, they should be considered in light of that due to, you know, the potential of masks falling off and whatnot. And uh, competitions may be performed virtually or with no more than two teams in a gym. Uh, so right now, you know, I think our league is planning to do some sort of a virtual competition within the entire league um you know towards the middle of april um, but pretty unique situation but they can be performed virtually um, and then indoor track and field um, so there will be a, a schedule of events created for each meet um, they they do say that we should only conduct virtual or or and or dual meets right now our league is going to stick with doing virtual meets uh to start in more of a jamboree style um, and then at, potentially as we progress during the year, we could have the possibility of, of doing a dual or, you know, potentially a Patriot League um, meet at the end of the at the end of the season. Um, but right now things will be held virtually and then we'll compare scores um, to the rest of the league um, at the by the end of the week. Um, competitions will be held outdoors, uh, but we'll be using indoor distances. So they'll be taking place over at Faxon Field uh, next door to the high school. Um, There'll be plenty of warm-up areas and designated um, di social distancing for each each team. Um, we'll mainly use the uh, the field itself uh, to separate groups there, um, which will also be designated areas for mass breaks as well. Uh, warm-ups: each participant should be going in one direction or the same direction on the track, um, and and then those that that do like to use their own watch, then they they. They'll have to uh, they'll have to bring their own. We can't um, provide watches or share watches uh, for timing. Um, sprints and hurdles. So we want to run in uh, the same lane uh, the, the entire time. And at starting blocks, originally this was a MIA modification of starting blocks should not be used, but uh, our league will allow them since we are do, just doing it virtually within our own team. Um, so starting blocks will be allowed for those uh, those sprinters and those hurdles. Um, the 300 meter uh, should just be one athlete per lane per heat at the start. And then, you know, using a two or three turn stagger, we can enter um, a new athlete. Um, the 600, 1,000, the mile, the two mile, one athlete per lane per heat. And then using a one, two or three turn style, depending uh, or stagger, depending on um, the amount of kids and the spacing that we could get. Um, relays starting in every other lane um, and then using a two or three turn stagger. 
um, basically, you know, should only have about max three teams per heat on a six lane track or two teams per heat on a four lane track. Our track is pretty big next door. So, um, but it, it should be about three, uh, a max of three uh, relays. And then also disinfecting the batons um, between relay groups. For the field events, just uh, basically touch base on the disinfecting of the equipment and sanitizing of the hands before and after uh, those events take place. Um, and then some other MIA mod uh, recommendations that that came across our, for our league. Uh, basically, uh, there is no postseason state tournament for the MIAA uh, during the fall two season. But our, as a league, we can organize some sort of a postseason experience, and that's what we that's what we'll do for a Patriot Cup. Um, for football, cheerleading, as I mentioned, might be doing a virtual competition for a Patriot League. And then same goes for indoor track, whether it's virtual or if we can make something work where they're competing in person. Um, and as I mentioned, all our fall two schedules are up there and it will be mainly just league based at this point. Um, you know, the possibility might occur where a school within the league potentially has to quarantine and we have to um schedule outside of the league but as of right now um all the schedules are within our league and are within our division um so that that wraps up the the powerpoint um let me just i'm going to stop sharing the tab okay all right so uh so yeah as i mentioned um we're very excited for our fall two athletes to, to get started and, and start with meets and, and games this week. Um, we do ask that, you know, all the athletes and the, uh, their parents just please, please advise, uh, abide by all the, the guidelines that are out there. Um, I know it's a difficult year, but, uh, we'll all get through that as long as we're all on the same page. Um, and as I mentioned, any other questions that might come across, uh, during the season, please feel free to touch base, uh, with me and I'll be happy to help you guys out. All right. Great. Thank you guys. Take care.